Devil May Cry, now one of Capcom's flagship series, first had its humble beginnings as an early version of Resident Evil 4 and eventually took on a life of its own as the game we now know and, for the most part, love. While I do like Devil May Cry 1 quite a bit, I'd personally put it somewhere in the middle of the series quality-wise, which still isn't half bad for a first entry. Unlike subsequent games in the DMC series, the boss roster is limited to a scant few bosses which challenge you multiple times to make up for the lack of variety. Some of them are pretty cool, some of them are pretty bad, but before we get into which are which, we must thank our patrons for voting for this game as the bi-monthly poll coverage subject. We'll definitely cover the rest of the series soon enough, with every game except for 5 having already been fully recorded. Without further ado, let us delve into the very mixed catalogue of foes that Malay Island has lurking throughout. Good god, holy shit, what the fuck, oh my fucking god. I could keep going on, but I might as well just cut to the chase. Mundus is one of the worst final bosses in history, a terrible conclusion to a very decent game, and a telling sign of the horrific things to come in the Devil May Cry series' near future. If you've played Asuro's Wrath's DLC, you'll likely be fond of the all-time classic level-long boss Chakravartin the Creator. If you haven't played Asuro's Wrath DLC, then you probably are not fond of Chakravartin the Creator. But anyways, what is Chakravartin the Creator if not an inspired replicate of Mundus' first form? Most are quick to call inspired pieces uncreative hacks that fail to hold the original's nuts, but Mundus, while clearly the original inspiration for the majority of wide lens flying encounters, serves as a template for basically everything you shouldn't do while making that type of fight. In this first phase, Dante transforms into, well, Asura the Destructor as you slowly make landfall with the giant Grey Mundus, who shoots out Grey Meteors and Grey Lasers that might as well just be invisible. Oh, and there's also invisible lasers, so check that box. Your overall goal is to whittle down his health at the pace of an Iron Man run through Dante's little pissed out asteroids, or to speed up the process, waste all of your devil stars and use a full charge devil trigger attack that sputters out a giant dinosaur looking thing for some reason, but it does a lot of damage, so whatever. It could be a gigantic dick for all I care. Anything goes just as long as I can get out of this as soon as possible. The second phase takes you back into regular human form, while Mundus becomes a smaller, still stationary set piece with, once again, an entire moveset of attacks you can't even see. Luckily, I enjoy getting a power drill rammed up my fucking asshole, so my masochism made this quite the enjoyable experience. The same course of action follows. Load up your Devil Trigger and attack him with Sparta, except you've already used all of your Devil Stars, so... <sighs> well, shit. Out of total desperation, I randomly switched to the Nightmare Beta, and it actually did decent damage, but after trying to kill him for 5 minutes and doing like an eighth of his health, I just gave up and used an untouchable and ended the fight in like 30 seconds. Up to this point, however, I'd had spent close to 20 minutes dying repeatedly, trying everything in my arsenal to no avail and facing punishment for so much as daring to walk towards a boss you need to walk towards to kill him, with Mundus's wrath coming by way of off-screen fireballs and lava pillars that shoot out of the ground with no evident telegraph or forewarning. So, to clarify the elephant in the room, yeah, this fight sucks. Mundus is a total inversion of the exciting and fluid gameplay that makes Devil May Cry 2001 so great. Now, usually after a statement like that, I go into my closing spiel because the fight's done and he actually dies here, except, uh, he doesn't. Mundus comes back for a third time and gets decimated AGAIN! Unfortunately, this phase is pretty much a standalone scripted bit that's designed to get the living shit smacked out of it, and it looks like a way uglier, polygonal version of Jack Baker's final form in Resident Evil 7. Expect that video in the next few months. Anyways, the ending was pretty fun, and whatever, this fight is shambolic, messy, and uniquely terrible. Why anyone who designs boss fights ever thinks that making one with the sole intention of its existence being to counter every single core gameplay mechanic is a good idea is beyond me, and Mundus very well may be the single worst made fight I have ever experienced. In an underworld without the god of time, they probably needed the god of good fucking boss fights instead. Holy fuck. I'm a nightmare apologist, which kinda sucks because I totally miss out on all the jokes I'd be able to squeeze out of his name if I wasn't. It's an extremely unusual boss fight, which I think gives a degree of much needed charm to this giant mass of ooze. For starters, if he gobbles you up, you have to win a fight down in his gargantuan beast of a stomach. If you lose, tough shit, he digests you or something. If you win, Nightmare gets a hefty 25% of his health blown to hell. In the outside world, it's one of those fights where he's only vulnerable if you take advantage of a weakness, in this case, light. This is exploitable with the use of shuttered windows, which you can only open by repeatedly hitting a wall-mounted wheel with a sword, like in most households. Doing so reveals his core, which is incredibly satisfying to hit. It makes this sound sort of like a broken glass when you whack it that really does 
does it for me. It's not on the level of the sound that plays when you deflect the headless guardian apes overhead slam, but it's up there. Over the course of the three battles you have with Nightmare, they remain fairly similar until the final one. Here, down in what may be the world's most evil looking cavern, you find yourself in far less spacious quarters than the past encounters. These can easily fill up with lasers, both massive and miniature, leaving you with very little room to operate. This fight has a very technical layer that most people are totally unaware of, with yours truly only knowing of it thanks to a video Matthew Matosis did on the game like eight years ago. For those of you out of the loop, Nightmare's two cores each have three phases that last between the three encounters. Blue, green, and red. These transformations, which make the fight progressively more difficult, are triggered by the amount of hits a core receives, totally independent from the damage dealt. You can reset this counter by getting Vord and sent down to give him a tummy ache, which is best done somewhere in the middle of the fight if you want to keep the difficulty to a safe minimum. Things like that make Nightmare much more interesting to me than the other demonic goons, raising him to a decent spot in my esteem. Difference in approach can make a world of, well, difference. Alex opted on using the grenade launcher and air hike to take down Griffin, while, after a long period of trial and error, I found the best strategy by far was Ifrit's Devil Trigger plus Ebony and Ivory. For comparison, Alex's fight with Griffin took about 8 or so minutes, mine in just under a minute plus change. And this isn't me saying any certain way of playing the game is right or wrong, just showing how much variety in playthrough style there is for such an old game. Although, I am in the right here. As a flying thunder owl, Griffin is unhittable with melee, generally speaking. The reason I like Ebony and Ivory so much is not just the damage output with Ifrit's Devil Trigger and easy accessibility to damage Griffin, but also how you can quickly change verticality mid-attack, which neuters a big part of Griffin's moveset, seeing as all of his attacks are parallel lines of lightning, either horizontal or vertical. You can either dodge these through finicky jumps and dodges that rely on inconsistent hitboxes, or, like me, be hyper-aggressive and shoot between every attack, only releasing circle when Griffin tries any sort of horizontal move that catches you mid-air. With this strategy, you get a constant refill of Devil Trigger and then a long period of ridiculous DPS. This is as close as you can get to a cheese strat without it officially being considered one. Griffin is really fun when fought the way I just described, probably the most engaging boss fight in Devil May Cry for me. Spiders have always been some of my favorite bugs, personally. Unlike most of the various creepy crawlies of the animal kingdom, they actually have a purpose besides harassing other animals and shitting out enormous volumes of offspring. Between killing mosquitoes and the fuzziness of their larger varieties, I grant them honorary mammal status. On my scale of life form value, they do pretty well for themselves. Feel free to ask me about this, I could go on about it all day. Phantom, much like his real life brethren, kicks ass. The fight can play out wildly differently each time, it's a lot more variable than you'd expect just looking at it. The first time he just let me hop on his head like Remy from Ratatouille, except instead of pulling his hair to make him cook I was stabbing him to death over the course of a brisk 30 seconds. You do have two other face-offs with him though, and at least in my experience they feel a bit more difficult to exploit than his debut. Unfortunately for Phantom he never quite learns how to counter Air Raid, one of the most devastating and entertaining moves in Dante's arsenal. You feel like a wrathful god, deploying your vengeful bug-zapping death rays with ruthless abandon and flying around wherever you please. It's nice having 15 seconds in this game where I don't feel like a helpless pinata, the contrast makes it all the more satisfying. The sound design is really nice in this fight too. I don't tend to mention that aspect much in videos, but this game has some great work in that department that I feel is worthy of note. It was so considerate of Capcom to telepathically register that I liked this boss and randomly drop him into Devil May Cry 2, just for me. What thoughtful, kind people the team behind that game are. <sighs> it's enough to melt my heart. While the Alistair has its moments throughout the game, it's Ifrit that reigns supreme in the boss fight realm. Devil May Cry's few night that sword had to be some sort of inspiration, is definitely its most memorable large-scale enemy, Nilo Angelo being the game's only humanoid boss. As explained after the third and final encounter, the so-called Nilo Angelo is actually Dante's brother Virgil, trapped in Black Knight armor and a slave to Mundus by force, not choice. So, what makes Nilo Angelo the best boss in Devil May Cry? For one, he's a silent antagonist, a rare but exceptionally memorable quality in a villain, and on top of that, he's bound by honor and only fights those who are aware of his presence, a really neat detail in my opinion. However, he does tend to taunt quite a bit, and usually this is the best opening to damage him, although as I'm about to go into, what he does really doesn't matter with the strat I used. In short, Ifrit's Kick 13 absolutely decimates Nilo Angelo, including his significantly harder third fight. 
So long as you're on top of dodging and don't get overly aggressive, you can probably finish Neelo in under a minute. Also, quick additional tip, based on my experience, stray away from Ifrit's aerial lunge attack. It's pretty much useless here as good as it is in the rest of the game. Anyways, Neelo is a great fight with huge moveset variety and constant action. Easily Devil May Cry's best boss and the starting point for one of the series' best characters. Thanks so much for watching and we hope you enjoyed. We'll be covering the remaining games in the series in the near future with an extra special upload planned for the dreadful dung heap that is Devil May Cry 2 authored by yours truly. Stay tuned for that and more and make sure to like and subscribe. That's all for now. Deuces.